So today we'll answer two questions. Why did the Germans use armor skirts in the Second World War and why no other major combatant did this? And the answer is basically the same. So the Germans used armor skirts or Schürzen in German quite extensively on their pants and assault guns. And as you can see here, these are the skirts of a Jagdpanzer IV at the Panzermuseum Munster. Note that the zigzag texture on the armor plates is called Zimmerit, something I will discuss in a future video. The technical term for such an armor is by the way spaced armor, yet spaced armor nowadays is used against a different weapon type than the armor skirts of the Wehrmacht. Which also leads to some misconceptions, which brings us to the question what these armor skirts are for, because there is a clear reason why the Germans used them extensively, which is also linked to why other countries didn't use them. But first let's address the misconception. One and likely the most common misconception about the armor skirts is that they were introduced to counter hollow charge warheads, especially those fired by infantry, so bazookas, panzerfausts and panzerschrecks. This is actually not an unreasonable assumption, since most spaced armors nowadays has exactly that purpose to defeat hollow or shaped charges. Now here a short explanation on how the hollow charge on a panzerfaust worked. Now let's take a closer look at the warhead. It was a hollow charge which is also sometimes called a shape charge. As you can see, both names make sense. Now these charges are quite complicated when it comes to actual physics. So take the following as a rough explanation. Basically, the explosion is focused in a certain direction and creates a conical jet. Additionally, the line of the void collapses inward and thus creates a high velocity jet of metal particles which penetrates the armor. Now the idea of contemporary spaced armor is basically that the hollow charge is detonated prematurely and that the molten jet goes out into the open more or less or is dissipated so that it can't focus on the main armor plate. Additionally, there's other spaced armor as well that basically intends to defeat the warhead in a way that it doesn't explode at all or that it breaks up. Uh, again, there are many different variants nowadays, but this is something for a completely different video. As you can see, it would make sense to use these skirts as defense against these warheads, yet there are two major problems with that. One is that back then these warheads were not so much reliable and some people argued that these skirts would actually have a detrimental effect, but the more important aspect is although these handheld anti-tank weapons were in some cases already introduced in 1942, they were not a major issue when the skirts were introduced. Namely, and we also know exactly why they were introduced. Because the Panzerwaffe was plagued by serious threats since June 1941, namely after they started to invade the Soviet Union and the problem were Soviet anti-tank rifles. These weapons were capable of penetrating the side armor of German tanks. As such, in February 1943 at the Führer conference, the introduction of skirts was discussed. Later that month, tests were conducted against skirts made from armor plates and wire meshes. Spielberger notes, penetration tests with 14.5 mm Russian anti-tank rifle, 100 meter distance, 90 degree angle, did not show any cracks or shots through the 30 mm side armor, which was protected either by wire mesh or plates. As a result of these successful trials in March 1943, Hitler ordered the introduction of armor skirts for Sturks, Panzer IVs and Panthers, which were in production or refitted. Production for skirts for the Sturks started in April 1943 and by May 1943 about 300 skirts were delivered to the Eastern Front. A primary source, the bulletin of the Panzertruppe from August 1944, confirms that the introduction was due to the Soviet anti-tank rifles as well. To quote, the protective cover skirts were introduced at the command of the Führer in order to provide sufficient security against the Russian tank rifle. Note that protective covers is Schutzabdeckung in German, which was the official name, yet the unofficial name Schürzen is also given in parentheses. Now some of you might ask the following question. When penetration tests showed that wire meshes also worked, why not use wire meshes since those have less weight than armor plates? Well, Spielberger actually notes two reasons for this. The first was an immediate one. The mounting for the wire meshes would have to be developed first, which would have required time. 
The second was probably the more important one in the long run, namely that the construction of proper wire meshes was not easy. Now the other question brought up initially was, why were the Germans the only ones who used skirts in large quantities of older major powers? And the answer to this question is indirectly answered already. Really, it is the same reason why the skirts were introduced. Anti-tank rifles and only the Soviets employed them in large numbers in World War II. And since they were mainly fighting the Germans, there was really no need for other countries to introduce armor skirts. Now a very interesting aspect is, by the way, that the Soviets assumed that the introduction of the armor skirts was actually related to the favorite World War II cat of all, the Panzerkampfwagen 6 Ausführung E Tiger. Namely, they suspected that the skirts, especially those added to the turrets, had the main goal to make Panzer IVs look like tigers. And as a final note, there are also some photos of Soviet tanks using wire meshes on the tanks. This was likely a measure to protect against Panzerfaust and Panzerschrecks, although I've seen various discussions that note that this likely would not have worked as well, since those weapons back then were of limited quality and as such the wire mesh could have resulted in increasing the effectiveness of a Panzerfaust due to issues with a delayed or fuse or something. Yet take this with a grain of salt since I hadn't found a proper source on this yet. I read this mostly on discussions or something and I don't think I ever read it in a high quality source so far. To summarize, the Germans introduced the armor skirts to protect against Soviet anti-tank rifles that were capable of penetrating the side armors of panzers. The Soviets were the only major combatant that used anti-tank rifles in large numbers, as such only the Germans had a real need for armor skirts in the Second World War. And although German penetration tests showed that wire meshes produced similar results and had less weight, they went with armor plates, most likely due to them being easier to produce. Big thank you here to the Panzer Museum Monster for inviting me. Also a big thank you to the Tank Museum at Boynton for inviting me as well. Thank you to Green Goblin Z for sending me the book on Sturmgeschütze and finally thank you to Peter from Tank Archives to help me to find one of his articles I couldn't find again. As always, source and description. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for watching and see you next time.